mentioned, you might be like, mm hmm. Second one, you might be like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Third, you're going to see they have the same steps every single time. And number is very, very similar to dimension. You're going to see a theme, and then profit is completely different. So example number four, find two numbers whose sum is 12 and whose product is a maximum. Now, we could guess and check because the numbers are fairly small, so we could take different numbers that add up to 12. 0 and 12, 1 and 11, 2 and 10, et cetera, and we could multiply them all out and find which one gives us the biggest profit. However, not a great method if the numbers are big. So if the sum was 1,000, you're not going to want to have to multiply all the combinations. So that's why we use quad quadraxis to make it a little bit easier. Um, dimension started with a diagram. We're not going to do a diagram. We're going to just assign variables. So we have to start with let x equal the first number and y equal the second number. We didn't need to do that yesterday because we labeled the diagrams. It was the same thing, but without using the words. But anytime we introduce a variable, we have to define it. So that's always the step one for the number problems is let y equal something, x equal to something. I'm going to use the fact that we're given a sum. What does sum mean mathematically? Adding. So I know that x plus y has to equal 12. What I'm trying to find the max or min of is the product, so I'm going to use P to represent product. What does product mean mathematically? Multiply, so I know that XY has to be as biggest as, as it can be. You should now kind of see a similarity between dimension. What's the problem over here? I have two variables, so what do I need to do over here for Y? get it by itself exactly like we did yesterday. So this was like our perimeter, and this was like our area. Same deal here. So if I isolate the y, what do I have on the other side? So that means my negative x plus 12 is going to go in for y over here. So keeping the x, then bracketing negative 12 plus, uh, negative, sorry, x plus 12. So just repeating over here is the same as what we did with perimeter. It just happens to be a sum. Here we did area, which happens to be a product. After that, identical to, dumber, or to dimension problems. What do we do next with dimension when we had something like this? Distribute, Distribute it, and then? Complete. complete the square, and then? State the vertex, depending what we want, and then answer the question. Same deal. So I'm going to distribute, which will give me negative x squared plus 12x. I'm going to complete the, complete the square, so I need to factor out that negative 1. So that's going to give me x squared minus 12x. What number is going to go in the blank here? Offer of 36. Where does that come from? Perfect. How do I balance it? Except multiply by negative 1 in front. So finishing off, I have negative x minus 6 squared plus 36. Vertex will be 636. These don't necessarily have to be positive because the question is just asking for numbers, and numbers can be positive or negative. So don't necessarily think like dimension they have to be. If you have a negative, it doesn't necessarily mean you made a mistake. The first number is whatever you defined as x. The second number, if the question wanted it, was whatever we were finding the max or min of. In this case, it was product. It's not always going to be product. It's just going to depend on what the question tells you. The question just wants the number. So we have the first number because we defined it as x, and x we know is 6. How do I find the second number? Yeah, exactly what we did yesterday. I'm going to take my expression for y, sub in x. So this gives me negative 6 plus 12. Which is 6. They won't always be the same number. That's just coincidental. Last step, just answer the question so it's really clear for the person marking the numbers are 6 and 6.
do you see the similarity dimension problems? Only thing that's going to change is here we might have a sum, we might have a difference, we might have something different. Here we're finding a product, we might be finding something different. So the two equations might change, process is going to be identical. Natasha? Yes? Six and six. Read to read number five. Highlight what you think is important. What would you like me to highlight? Yep, that's everything I would have highlighted. What's the difference between these? Sum is now a difference. Max is now a minimum. Everything else is going to stay exactly the same. We have to start by defining the variables. We didn't do it with dimension because we labeled a diagram, so that was the same thing. Because I have no diagram, we start with let x equal the first number, y equal the second number. Does it have to be x and y? No, use whatever you want. We're just used to parabolas being with x and y. It's y and use x and y. The only number in the question always I start on the left-hand side and I just create an equation. This time it's not a sum, it's a difference. What does difference mean? Subtract. So x minus y equals 10 in this case. I'm just going to make a note when you look back why we put the minus sign is because this particular question gave us a difference. <coughs> I want to get y by itself. Offer of x minus 10. Confirm. No one confirming. Right, right, I think, not really a confirmation. It's like a kind of confirmation. I agree. Product, we're looking to be a min, so product's going to be x times y. Y is going to come out, what's going to go in its place? x take away 10. Same step in all the questions we did. It's going to be a distribute, complete the square, get the vertex. Offer 25. Balance it. Is that okay, this is a negative? Yeah, and we want to be the smallest possible product, so negatives typically are smaller numbers. So not a surprise here. All we need to do is answer the question. What does the question want? The two numbers. So what's the first number? Which is five. How do we find the second number? Yep, substitute in for y. which would be negative five. Is that okay we have a negative? Yep, because we're just finding numbers. So the numbers are five and negative five. Do 
you see the similarity between four and five? Which you should see now the similarity with dimensions. It's the same steps every time. We're just changing what the equation looks like and what the number looks like. This already turned out to be a down parabola, so it will be a max. This turns out to be an up parabola, so it will be a min. Hello. Shall we exchange money? <laughs> but I have hoodie money for you. Oh, okay. Okay, so there was a check, and then the other one was... Yes, and it's supposed to be 55, and I don't have five for you. I'll have change. That was um, Giovanna. Okay. Thank you. Uh, whatever you're doing, yep. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then everybody is good to go. Chasing them. Chasing them is so much work. I just put G down for Corey, and they were fine with it yesterday. So they played really well yesterday. They did. Nice. Yeah, they played well. That's awesome. It's good. I mean, there's a few like, because like, some, some girls have never played, so they had no idea. But the refs were really good, and awesome. coaches were good. And awesome. awesome. I'm surprised that St. James doesn't have a boys team. I know, me too. Number six. Got my handy dandy highlighter ready. Two numbers. What's different? Adding their sum and their product, not a, just a product this time, which we'll talk about when we get there. What is step one going to be? Do we have to use X and Y? We just like parabolas with X and Y. If you want to like branch out and do A and B or P and Q, do whatever you want. I take the only number in the question and I start with that on the left. What's the only value we have? And what do we know about 16? Mm, right in front of 16, what's the word? Difference. So how do I show a difference? X minus Y equals 16. I know I'm going to have to isolate Y, so I always just do it right away. Oh, I heard two offers at the same time. <laughs> Third offer. X minus 16, right? If we take Y to this side and 16 over, it's going to turn negative. What we did last time, the product is out because this question doesn't mention product. It mentions adding their sum and their product. So I need a variable. I'm going to use M just to represent that, that I want it to be a max. Okay, it doesn't really matter what you have on the left-hand side. I just need it equal to something. Now what I need to do is add their sum and their product. So I'm just going to do it in words first so that you see in a second where the math is coming from. I need to add their sum and their product, sorry? Was it a min? Oh, it was a min, thank you. Don't get too caught up in what's on the left. I just need an equal to something. Usually I use P for product. This I'm just using M because we don't have anything else. What does sum mean? So X plus Y. And what does product mean? X times Y. 
So this is literally adding their sum and their product. That's what the question has said. All I've done is translate word by word. Now I'm going to take out y and I'm going to put in x minus 16. Okay, so y became x minus 16 for both sections here. I'm just going to simplify. For the sum, I've got x plus x. I can put those together. What's x plus x? So I have 2x minus 16 for the sum. For the product, I just need to distribute. So x times x and x times negative 16. And then I'm just going to simplify those two together so we have a nice parabola. I'm going to put the x squared first. How many x's do we have? And the constant? So even though I started with something really complicated, it still simplifies just down to a regular parabola. Okay, complete the square. An offer of positive 49. Looking for confirmation. Where does that come from? 14 divided by 2 squared. How do I balance plus 49? Minus 49. Confirm minus 65. Vertex. <coughs> Questions so far? What are we trying to find? What do we need to answer? What are the numbers? What's the first number? How do we find the second number? Negative 9. Confirm. Where did negative 9 come from? 7 minus 16. The numbers are? 7 and negative 9. One of the homework questions is going to say the sum of their squares has to be, I can't remember if it's a min or a max, it's going to say the sum of their squares. So let's just talk that through before you get there. That's not the same as the sum of the sum and the product. What does sum of squares mean? Well, what does sum mean? Adding. What does it mean to square something? So you would have x squared plus y squared. You might just want to jot that down. That's the sum of their squares. The sum of their squares. Mm -hmm. Just little homework heads up there. Let's go ahead and do profits. Hayden, James, and Lindsay. Remember economics last semester? Remember total revenue, how the curve was like a parabola shape? And then the price that you should pick is the top. Okay, total revenue is uh, and then you pick your price by where the maximum is. That's why, because this is a parabola and it's max and it's the maximum. <laughs> you did unit six. It was probably a blur. I'm assuming you've read to read number seven already. What's it about? Sweatshirts. These questions always deal with usually selling something, and they'll tell you at this price, so many people will buy it. Then what they're going to do is start changing the price, and they'll tell you because of that price changed, here's the change in the number that want to buy it. 
Okay, so that's what profit questions already look like. We need to know that we're selling something for $20. I don't really care what it is in the grand scheme of things. At $20, 300 people are going to buy it. Now, for every $5 increment, 30 less are going to buy it. And what we want to know is what price will give us the most amount of profit and what is the profit. So this is the typical economics question. If you own a small business, you need to know what's going to happen if I change my price. If I lower it, more people are going to buy, but then I'm making less money. If I raise the price, less people are buying it, but I'm making more money. There has to be a particular point that that's going to give you the most amount of money. That's what these questions are always going to be about. They're always going to work exactly like this first one. Oh, was it? Nice. We're always going to start by defining a variable, and I only need to define one, and it's always going to be what's happening to the price. So you need to look for that change. This is changing for every $5 increment. So X is going to be, the, sorry, the number of $5 increments. X is always going to be whatever's happening to the price. I call it the price change. We don't do left and right this time. That's dimension and that's number. I'm going to stri jump straight in and I'm going to talk about profit. In general, how is profit made? Well, when we don't look about tax and all the other things, in general, we calculate profit by the number of items sold. Items sold times the price. Assuming we've already paid costs, we don't have tax, we don't have anything else. Cool. Before we've changed the price, before we've done anything, when we're just straight up selling what we're selling, how many did we sell and what did we sell it for? So they've told us 300 people will buy sweatshirts, and what's the price they'll buy them at? $20. So those numbers always go in the front of each binomial. I call them the original amounts. So before we've changed anything, the two original amounts go at the front of each binomial. One will be price, one will be the number sold. The numbers in the back of the binomials will be after the changes. And I'm going to go to price first because it's the first thing mentioned. Are we increasing or are we decreasing the price? So it's going to be a plus. By how much are we increasing it? $5. How many times? X. So we're increasing it by $5. We don't know how many times. That's what X is. In the number sold, what happens because we raise the price by $5? Does the amount sold go up or down? So it's a subtraction. How many less people are going to buy? 20. Was it 30 or 20? 30. Thank you. How many times? X. These will always work this way. The original numbers will go in the front, the changes go in the back, and the X's is always in the second half of each binomial. What do you think I'm going to do now? I'm going to foil it. I'm going to complete the square, and then I'm going to state the vertex. Don't be scared of the numbers. We're probably going to be dealing with bigger numbers in these questions than all the other questions. It's money. Big numbers are a good thing when you're dealing with money, unless it's taxes. Let's not talk about that. But if you're getting paid, big numbers are big. So I'm just going to FOIL. So 300 times 20, 6,000. The outside, I have 300 times 5x, 1,500x. The inside, I have negative 30 times 20, negative 600x. And the last, I have negative 30x times 5x, negative 150x squared. Now I'm just going to make it look like a parabola, so I'm going to put the negative 150x squared first. <coughs> I'm going to combine the two x's. If I had 1,500 minus 600, 
I'm left with 900. And then the constant at the end, plus 6,000. Complete the square. I've got to take that negative 150 out first. And you can use your calc for this. Offer of minus 6x. Just looking for confirmation. Okay, and with the 6,000, just gets pushed off to the side just like before. Fill in the magic number. Offer of 9. Minus 9, except times by the negative 150. I'm just going to pause there, and you can ask any questions if you don't see where something's coming from. Again, don't let the big numbers scare you. It's money. We want big numbers. Okay, finishing off the completing the square, I've got the negative 150 in front. I'm going to have a binomial squared. Offer of x minus 3. And at the end, Offer of 7350, sounds confirmed. Vertex. The 3 always represents the x, and the x is the number of changes, because that's how we defined it at the beginning. The y value is always the max profit. Profit will always look like this. will always be exactly the same. What does the question want to know? What price and what is the maximum profit? The price is going to come right from the price binomial up here. So we know that price equals 20 plus 5x. What is x? 3. What's 20 plus 5 times 3? 35. And that's always going to be a dollar value because that we're dealing with the price. So what it tells us in terms of this question is we can raise the price three times by $5. After that, we're going to start losing money. What is the maximum profit? It comes right from the vertex. It has to be. Seven thousand three hundred and fifty. So in terms of this question, it means if we don't raise the price three times, we're not going to make as much. If we raise it more than three times, we're not going to make as much. This is the most we can raise it before people stop buying it, or less people, I should say, stop buying it. Questions? They're always going to work like this. Read to read number eight. So many words. Really, it's the economists that care about the words. The mathematicians, all we care about is the numbers. So what's the first number we see in the question? 500. The next number, 60 canoes. Revenue, 30,000. Every $50 increase in price, sold will drop by four. What price will yield the, max, max, the maximum revenue? Way back when, when I was in university, like a thousand years ago, I worked at Walmart. 
And first I started as a cashier, then I was too smart, so they put me in layaway, which was completely boring. So then they put me in the back office and I was in charge of or dealing with the team that looked at loss prevention. So either people stealing items or employees stealing items. So I asked the lady, what's the weirdest thing that anyone has ever stolen from Walmart? What do you think it was? A canoe. How do you steal a canoe from Walmart? I don't know. I don't know. That was the weirdest thing, a canoe. Well, I would think it would be more than one, but how do you just walk out with a canoe and nobody notices? You don't, you, you don't be suspicious. I don't know. And it was uh, not an employee, because employees, you can get stuff through the back. It's easier. Not that I'm telling you to steal from your work. But as a customer, I'm like, that's, that's really weird. Canoe. I just walked, walked out with a canoe, which I've never stolen anything, but I can't imagine a canoe would be at the top of my list. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Like, do you just put that under your jacket? What? Do you, what I don't know. No, you just walk back out. Like, that's mm. like someone said, no, right? You just walk out with it. Yeah, mm. confidence. Yeah. They're not going to have, like, the little metal detector things on it. Maybe, they, I don't know. No, but if they did. Do you know what is the most stolen item from grocery stores? What? Meat. Really? Like, roasts and steak and that kind of stuff, because it's the most expensive. Yeah. But how do you steal a roast? <laughs> like, do you just put that under your jacket and walk out? Just put it down. Mm, Rem note to self, don't have dinner at James's house. So much. Not so much. We always start with defining x. x is always the way the price is changing. We're increasing it in this one. Profit is always the number sold times price. Now, sometimes I put little blanks to remind myself there's four numbers I'm going to fill in, two in the front, two in the back. The two in front are before we made any changes. So how much are we selling this canoe for and how many are being sold? 500 is the price. 60 is the amount that's being sold. The back numbers are the changes. What's happening to the price? How are we changing? Are we increasing or are we decreasing? Increase means add. How much are we increasing it by? 50. How many times? X. We don't know. That's what we're going to find out in a second. Because we change the price, what happens to the amount sold? It goes down, so it's minus. Times? Nope, nope. X. If you forget your X's, what's going to happen when you FOIL and simplify, you're not going to have a parabola. If you don't have a parabola, you can't complete the square. If you can't complete the square, you can't get the vertex. If you can't get the vertex, you can't solve the question. So a hint is, look, make sure you have two X's. Okay, let's FOIL it out. 60 times 500. 30,000? 3,000 or 30,000? I heard both. Thirty. Sixty times fifty x. Three thousand. I heard. Didn't sound confirmed though. Okay. Negative four x times five hundred. Negative four x times five hundred. Negative two thousand x. Then negative 4x times 50x. Are we happy with all these numbers? Because there sounds like a bit of confusion in there. Okay, let's simplify and order it. So the negative 200x squared is going to come first. How many x's do I have in total? 1,000. And the constant? Complete the square, negative 200 is going to come out front. 30,000 is going to be shoved at the back. Okay. 
offer of minus 5x. Magic number. That's why you have a magic calculating machine. 6.25, I heard. Balance. Finishing it off, I have negative 200 out front. I need a binomial squared. Constant at the back. Confirm, 31,250. What does the question want to know? What has it asked us? It doesn't actually ask the maximum product or profit. It's just asking for the price. So price is this, is this binomial up here. So we know it's 500 plus 50 times x. What's x? Offer of 625. Just looking for confirmation. I want you to find someone who looks smart, and I want you to try number nine. I'll give you four, five ish minutes, then we'll talk. So let's just talk about setting up the equation, then I'll give you some time to finish it off. X, X is going to be the number of additional trees. So you notice this one isn't about money at all. So this is not only economics, it applies to geography, biology, all these other things. We need to figure out how do we figure out the number of apples. So just in general, how would you figure out if you had a large orchard, how many apples there were without having to count them all? The number of trees times number of apples per tree. Before any changes, before we plant anything new, how many trees do we have and how many apples does each of the tree have? 20 apples. That's what somebody said, that's what I wrote down. 300 apples. Very good, 20 trees and 300 apples. How are we changing it? What are we doing and what's going on here? Okay, let's go to trees first because that's actually what we're doing is we're adding additional trees. So we're adding one more tree times X. So that's why I put imaginary one because we don't need it. Because of that, what's happening? Minus 10x. Let's just pause. Why would we want to add more trees if we're getting less apples? Why would we want to add more trees if we're getting less apples? Natasha. Yeah, we're getting more overall. It's just we're decreasing per tree. Eventually, yes, we're going to have more apples. Why would an adding a tree give less fruit? It's taking the sunlight, it's taking the nutrients, it's taking everything else. Then I would get out of the orchard business. <laughs> okay, another couple minutes, finish it off, answer the question. Blah, blah, blah. Twenty times three hundred. Oh, 
it's frozen. 20 times negative x. Negative 200x. x times 300. x times negative 10x. So negative 10x squared plus 100x plus 6,000. Negative 10, come, negative 10 comes out front, 6,000 gets pushed to the back. Confirm so far? Magic number? Balance? Negative 10, x minus 5 squared. Confirm so far? Vertex? What is the question asking? So I go back and I look at the binomial. First one is number of trees. What's our value of x? Total amount of trees? 25. There's a lot of trees. But if this is our livelihood, that's okay. We're